So today we're going to go over setting up a drawing in Civil 3D. So the first thing we're going to want to do is open up our template drawing. If we don't want to do that and we want to work with an existing, an existing drawing, we can also use the command import styles and settings found in the manage tab and styles panel. To import your layers, navigate to the Home tab, expand the Layers panel, and open the Layer State Manager in the Layer State dropdown. Click the Import button, navigate and select your template drawing, then select that new Layer State in the Layer State dropdown. This does require that your template drawing has a saved Layer State. By default, the layers from the original drawing will be turned off, so highlight them and turn them on. You may want to import your styles, settings, and layers from your template drawing versus directly using your template drawing if you're working off a drawing that's full of point groups and surfaces that you would rather not take the time to transfer over. Next, you'll want to set your units. Enter the command units in the command line and set your angles to degrees, minutes, and seconds. Uncheck the clockwise box and click the direction button and set your base angle to east. Next, we will set our coordinate system. Right click your drawing name in the settings pane, select edit drawing settings, set your coordinate system in the units and zone tab. Now, if we went the route of using our template drawing, we will want to copy and paste to original coordinates the legal line work of your area of interest. In BC, this would be downloaded from Parcel Map BC. Use the aerial imagery in the geolocation tab to make sure you're in the right coordinate system. Next, we will want to import nearby government control monuments. In BC, a CSV of these would be downloaded from Parcel Map BC. I found it necessary to resave these CSVs in Excel to ensure proper importation into Civil 3D. If there is a GCM close to the area of interest, use that as your grid to ground reference point and use the provided combined scale factor. Right click the drawing name in the settings pane Select Edit Drawing Settings or enter Edit Drawing Settings into the command bar. Click on the Transformation tab. Check Apply Transform Settings box and uncheck the Apply Sea Level Scale Factor box. Click the arrow button in the Reference Point box, then graphically pick the GCM you wish to scale about. Copy and paste the newly populated local northing and eastings into the grid northing and eastings table values. You can also choose new local northing and eastings values if you wish to create a shift in order to lessen the chance of confusing grid coordinates with ground or local coordinates. In the grid scale factor box, you'll see a computation drop down. Select user defined and enter the combined scale factor supplied for the GCM. You can set a rotation angle if you'd like in this box here. I've found that some larger construction projects will make use of this to ease calculations. If there are no nearby GCMs available, choose a centrally located area and create a manual point at that location. Use that point as your reference point and get the CSF from NCAT or TRX using an approximate elevation from Google Earth. This can be refined later using post-processed GPS static data if needed. NCAT is the American version from the National Geodetic Survey. It has a built-in map to double-check your data entry. TRX is the Canadian version from Natural Resources Canada. They both provide the exact same result. TRX will let you convert to lat long if desired. Both will allow for ellipsoidal height entry only. You can either enter the orthometric height in its place 
In this particular example, the geoid separation would mean the CSF calculated would give you a value that is three millimeters over one kilometer different versus if you had entered the correct ellipsoidal height. Or you can use GPSH from NRCAN to get the correct ellipsoid height and use that in either NCAT or TRX. Once you have your CSF, enter that into your drawing settings using the same method discussed earlier. Now we will want to delete the GCMs we had previously imported and re-import them now that the transformation settings have been set. Make sure you select your PNEZ grid point file format when importing the points. If you don't already have one, you can make one by expanding the point settings in the settings pane, expand point file formats and right click PNEZD comma delimited, select copy and change the name to grid PNEZD comma delimited or something similar. Click the header of the table on the northern column and select grid northing from the drop down and do the same for the Eastings. You can change the default file format to CSV if you'd like as well. In Civil 3D, northing means ground or local northing and grid northing will be your grid or UTM in this example. Now when you re-import the GCMs or any other points that are in grid coordinates, use this file format and they will automatically be transformed into your ground-based system which is the system that your drawing will be natively in. The transformation is actually transforming all of your Kogo points and geolocated imagery into a grid system defined by you. This allows you to do everything, all of your drafting and plan Kogoing in ground. And if you wish to export any points in grid, for example, search or layout points where GPS will be used, you simply select your new grid point file format in the format dropdown of the export points tool. Now we will want to use the traverse editor to Kogo in the legal plans. Use the command PDF import to bring in the plans you'd like to Kogo in. Use the line work in your drawing to get an approximate scale and rotation of the plans and then move them to one side of your drawing. I like to order them left to right with the newest on the left and getting progressively older to the right. I have separate layers for each plan. Next, set your desired layer in the layer dropdown. In the Home tab and the Create Ground Data panel, you'll see the Traverse button. Click the dropdown and select Traverse Editor. You can also use the command Traverse Editor in the command line. In the header of the Traverse Editor, you can choose if you want to create points, lines, or both. Set your zoom setting. I re recommend no zoom. Choose if you're entering straight lines or lines and arcs, and you can also access these settings. Click on the Occupied Point cell and use the Select button to graphically choose the approximate location on the plan where you wish to start. The initial angle cell can be ignored as we will be working with azimuths and bearings that reference north, not another point. Note that since this tool is designed for traversing, you cannot create spur legs off the main traverse, only single leg side shots. For that reason, I suggest starting at one corner and, your, and working your way around the perimeter of the plan, filling in the interior lot lines with side shots. If a singular leg side shot isn't sufficient to fill that area in, the line by azimuth and bearing tools can be used, which we will discuss later. When entering an azimuth, you must preface the angle with the letter N denoting north and enter it in ddd.mmss decimal format. If you set the number, which Civil 3D denotes as name here, of your initial point, and of the first leg, every additional leg will auto number after that. You can apply mathematical expressions to azimuths or distance directly in the cell box. The suffix for a distance with its unit symbol will automatically convert it into the drawing units. 
bearings must be entered in north south space dd space mm space ss space west or east format and mathematical expressions cannot be applied directly in the cell for curves you can either use a chord arc if you know the direction and length of the chord and the radius length or radial arc if you know the arc length and direction and distance to the center of the arc. To insert a side shot, right click the cell of the point you want to come off of and select insert row after. Choose side shot from the side drop down and enter the values as you normally would. When you're done, you can save the traverse as a TRV2 file, which can be imported back into this or another drawing and can be viewed and edited in notepad if desired. You can also use line work to Kogo in the plans and add points to the end of the line work to accomplish the same goal. There is a bit more flexibility this way and it can be slightly quicker, but you lose the graphical user interface, record keeping and ability to easily edit that the Traverse editor provides. You can start the line by azimuth command from the draw panel in the home tab under the line dropdown or start the line command, pick your start point and use the transparent command apostrophe ZD. Azimuth entry is in the ddd.mmss format and if you'd like to add or subtract a value, you can use the transparent command apostrophe CAL. Distances support the suffix apostrophe to automatically convert feet into meters. And like all other data entry in the command bar, you can use the transparent calculate command. Line by bearing follows all the same rules, the transparent command apostrophe BD and the quadrants start in the northeast at one and run clockwise. To Kogo in curves, you can either use line by azimuth to Kogo in the radius point and back out and then create an arc defined by the start, center and end or use the command curve from end of object if the incoming line is tangential to the curve. Use a negative value for the radius to create a counterclockwise curve and a positive radius to create a clockwise curve. This command can be found in the home tab, draw panel and the curves drop down. You can add line annotations by navigating to the annotation tab, add labels drop down, line and curve, line and curve labels, set your labels, then click the add button and select which lines you'd like to add dynamic labels to. Next, we will want to copy the Kogod plan line work and move it to an open area of the drawing and merge all the line work of the different plans together. Copy and shift similar lock corners to each other and rotate older plans to match newer plans, ideally holding a plan that has grid bearings. If there is no plan new enough to have grid bearings, then choose one plan to shift and rotate to the GIS line work, which theoretically is in grid bearings and hold that plan going forward. Delete overlapping line work, keeping newer line work when there is conflict. And you should always have the plans calced without rotation off to the side if you need to use that original plan line work for boundary resolution later. Once your plans are connected to each other, you can shift them to a GCM if available. Otherwise, choose a common lock corner in the GIS line work to shift to. And finally, we'll want to create search points where needed and export them in grid if using GPS or ground if using a total station. After your plans have been kogoed, you can use the create points tool to manually add points at the end of each line segment or just at the points you would like to search in the field. Open the points creation tool, expand the points creation parameter and set the prompts for elevation, point names and descriptions to automatic. Set your desired values below and your desired point identity and use the create point manual tool. Alternatively, you can set your descriptions to manual and each time you create a new point, you can give a unique description. For example, search OIP, 
or search OAP. Next, we will create a point group that encompasses all of our search points and export it in grid if we're gonna be using GPS or ground if we're going to be using a total station. 